Hey everyone, it's Ryan on the Syntax Byte, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to quickly convert an XML file into a CSV file using Python uh, to convert it. So it's only gonna require like two lines of Python here, basically, uh, to convert your XML file to a CSV file. So to help us out with this video today, I have this XML file here. This is like a fake API response that I had ChatGPT uh, generate for me. Uh, but it is valid at XML. So we can see here that we've got a couple of different layers to this XML file to navigate. We've got status uh, and messages from the API. Then within the data, we have a couple different data sets um, that we find within the file. So we have the users and then as well the products. Uh, and we'll notice that we have a complication where the address here is split into three different elements. And I'll show you how to deal with that. Uh, at the end of the video, we're going to start with the products uh, data set and turn that into a CSV file, um, and then we'll deal with the users. Um, of course, we have to keep in mind that CSV is a tabular uh, data format. It, it makes a table. Um, so while it may be possible to combine users and products in such a way that we have a column for each of these fields, um, and then, you know, maybe for the users, certain columns are null, and then for the products, the other columns are null. Um, it's, it would be really difficult to convert this particular file into a single CSV. So just keep that in mind that XML and CSV are different formats. One uh, it can basically have as many levels um, as, you, as you want it to, like this XML file, it can store essentially multiple tables of data in one file, um, and CSV can't really do that. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, we're going to split these into two separate CSV files uh, for today. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do uh, and that you're going to want to do is go ahead and do a pip install of uh, pandas. And you probably already have pandas, but if you don't, um, just go ahead and pip install pandas. The other thing that we need to make sure that we install is a library called LXML. Um, this is what pandas uses to like parse the, um, the XML, so just go ahead and install that as well. You can see I've already got both of these uh, installed. It lets me know that I should upgrade my pip, but we don't need to worry about that too much right now. So what we can go ahead and do is just create a new notebook uh, and get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is import pandas as PD. Uh, pandas uses the other library, so once you've imported pandas, you're good to go uh, there. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, set our a variable df that stands for data frame. You can make it whatever you want, um, but what we're going to get back is a pandas data frame, uh, which is a type of uh, table essentially. Um, and so we can do pd uh, dot read xml, okay, um, and then we got to pass our file name, so sample file dot xml. And then we need to pass the XPath, okay? Um, so you can go ahead and look up the XPath syntax on W3Schools uh, if you need to understand a bit more about XPath. It has some useful examples here. Um, for the most part, I think these examples basically walk you through how to do what like 90% of people would need to do in this case. Um, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is select all the elements by a particular name. Um, so, sorry. I'm gonna go into our file and just select all of the product elements um, as a shortcut. But what you may wanna do is navigate from response slash products and then do, do product. Um, had you maybe had multiple tables or something like that. Um, but I'm just gonna do slash slash product um, and go ahead and run that. And it does not run. LXML was not found. We just installed it. How does this work? I think we have to go to base, use our base kernel because I had that conda environment installed or set up, I think. And there we go. So we can see that we can go ahead and print uh, df and we can see here that we have this, this uh, table. So to get this into a CSV file, all we have to do is dot to CSV um, and then our out file CSV, I can call it. Um, I would also recommend passing index equals false uh, just to make sure you don't end up with this one and zero uh, as an additional column in your CSV. Um, if you came here just to convert the file, you probably don't want that. Um, and then we can see that we have out file. Um, JupyterLab here uh, shows it in a table format, but if we go ahead and look at it uh, with the editor, we can see it's a normal CSV file. 
Um, and cool, so we're done. We have converted our XML to CSV. Um, so now I want to show you how to deal with situations where you may not have a sort of two-dimensional uh, XML file where you might have you know, uh, further depth to your XML file. Um, this is where you need to employ another strategy. So we'll go ahead um, and use user instead. So we will then take user and uh, we can go ahead and add a cell in here just to look at our data frame. And so you can see it does work, but the address comes up as uh, not a number. Um, and so this isn't what we want. Um, probably what we want to do in this case is format the address into a single uh, column um, or have like multiple columns, but then have like a column just for each user where there's street, city, and zip code. Um, I'm going to format it, format it into a single column, but the solution I'll show you uh, can work if you want to have three uh, distinct columns as well. So what we're going to do uh, to go ahead and deal with this and similar types of issues um, where you might have the format of your XML is not necessarily just one column uh, or like a bunch of columns in one row uh, for each uh, individual item. So what we're going to do is use something called a style sheet. So there's documentation about this available on W3Schools as well. Um, it's called XSLT. Um, and essentially what we're going to do is reformat the XML file before it gets given to pandas. Okay. Um, and so we're going to reformat it so that it is essentially just, you know, um, like a two dimensional uh, XML file. So I'm going to go through this rather quickly. Um, the goal of this video is not to teach you how to do XSLT or how to make X XML style sheets. Um, the goal of this video is just simply to um, basically point out that this functionality exists and show you a simple example and then uh, you can go ahead and create a uh, style sheet that is tailored um, to your situation. So I'm going to go ahead and um, create a sample file style sheet x l s l t okay and i'm just going to copy and paste my style sheet that i made earlier uh, so that we don't have to do this all on camera but essentially um and i basically just copied this from here um we start off with doing a match uh, so we start our template here we do a match which is that same x path syntax that i had mentioned earlier all of the paths in here are x path um, so basically then we just do a for each and I'm doing for each response data users user um, So that's how you would type that whole path out and then in there I'm basically recreating the user element and so you can see we have ID and I just take the value of ID But then you can see I have first name last name and then address and so for address I'm actually adding in uh, all of the values into a single element here called address um, and that will allow us to have that in one single element and convert it easily to a CSV. And so you can apply this same concept regardless of how complicated uh, your XML file might may be uh, to get it in a format that's going to work for pandas. Um, so just keep in mind that you still have to reformat like the entire file. So the result of this template is all that's going to be given to pandas. So just make sure that you don't just reformat like address and hope the other stuff will show up because uh, it won't. So we can go ahead and save that file. Um, and then if we go back to pandas, we can pass an additional parameter called style sheet uh, and do sample file style sheet dot XSLT. And so you can now see that we actually have the address there in one line. Um, and we can go ahead and just like before, uh, put that out to a CSV. Uh, I think it's just stuck. There we go. So we have now successfully converted uh, that portion of our file to a CSV as well. So that's all I wanted to share with you guys today. I hope it was helpful. Once again, this has been Ryan on the Syntax Fight. If this video was helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more tech tips like this, and I will see you in the next video.